Oh, well, um, hey, and welcome to the third uh, coding challenge, the snake game. Um, yeah, the, the challenge was to make the snake game, and I did. It, it did, however, take like a, a lot longer than expected because I actually found it rather entertaining and wanted to really challenge myself. And it was pretty challenging, at least relative to my skill level. Um, I made a lot of changes to the original challenge uh, stated in the video, um, and I actually made the game 3D and gave it several cool small features that really, you know, at least to me, made it a, an incredibly charming game. So what I want to do is to show you this process, or at least part of it, um, in some, you know, rather relatively large steps to, to see the development process and what I learned and what I uh, ran into, what kind of problems I encountered, and, you know, just the general challenge as a whole. For starters, I created the map, uh, the plane, as you can see. Um, and I created some entities, food entities, that I could place on this map. What I did is I generated a grid uh, by using two nested for loops with an X and a Y coordinate um, in which these tiles would be placed and within these tiles they, there would be a food entity. Later on the snake entity would belong in those tiles as well and use those tiles coordinates and these tiles would also allow for uh, flagging whether or not uh, it contained a snake or it contained uh, food. It was an easy way of, of handling the, the different entities and, and where they were. I first, you know, when I first made it, I tested some things out. I actually saw how was the food aligning with the map, was it being placed in the middle, did it look like synchronized, did it look synchronous, I mean. Um, and was everything working as I'd hoped? And it seemed it was, and it worked out really well. Uh, it, this wasn't the hardest part by any means, but it was definitely um, an interesting uh, solution nonetheless. I then started designing the actual snake, and uh, as you can see here, this is the design process of the head, or at least the result of the design process. It turned out to be surprisingly difficult, because processing doesn't have a native um, function for defining the coordinate of the box. Instead, you would have to use the translate uh, function to translate the spot where you wanted the box, and then actually place the box in that origin, the new origin, or the translated origin. It did, however, work out, and it actually it actually was really great practice for learning how this translation exactly works and really for, for getting a, a fully or a better understanding of how placement and positioning works in 3D space as well as, you know, placement and translation with rotation included. So it was really um, insightful, although difficult and somewhat troublesome. And here you see the final design of the three snake parts. You see the head, the body and the tail. As you can see, the, the parts have different sizes and different colors, depending on how far down the snake they are. I just fed the individual uh, objects their current position in the snake array, and with that position they could, de they could figure out how far down they were, and you know, with that, uh, determine the, the size they needed and the color they should have had. Next came placing the snake on the map in the actual grid. This was a long and tiresome process, as plenty of errors occurred along the way. A common problem was uh, incorrect translations of the different objects and translations before and after uh, rotations, so translations in the wrong order. This often uh, resulted in misalignment of the snake body parts and made it look visually uh, incorrect. Often I had to uh, debug these problems by you know, visualizing the origin of the tile to check if the origin of the snake or the origin which the snake parts rotated around uh, was aligned with the actual origin of the tile. This helped a lot, although it took a long time and was very difficult to solve and to find the, the problem. As of successfully placing the different body parts of the snake on a map, I decided to create a method for spawning the snake. I wanted some randomness to this spawning so the snake didn't spawn in the exact same place and the exact same direction every time. So I created this randomness by deciding uh, a random direction for the head to face and just placing the following body parts behind the snake. This means that every time you start the game, the snake has a different uh, direction and a different position in which it starts. In attempted to make the snake move, um, this was actually a surprisingly difficult task and I messed it up in several ways. Here's one of the ways I actually messed it up. I'm not exactly sure how and I don't remember how, but I fixed it and it uh, eventually came to work. Eventually, um, I succeeded in making the snake move and it actually functionally uh, worked as I intended, although some visual errors occurred along the way. Um, it was a mix-up between the manner in which the body segment uh, rotated and the head and tail segment rotated. They didn't match in their manner of rotation and in the uh, functionalities they used to determine which way they should be rotated. So 
when um, you're trying to rotate the head, the other parts of the body didn't follow along, although their position was updated correctly. Eventually, the arrows and box both visually and functionally were fixed, um, and the snake moved exactly as intended. The manner in which this snake moved was essentially that each segment of the body had data about its current direction as well as its position and which tile it was currently occupying. This data would be fed to the head as the snake moved by the input of the player, um, and the head would then have a new tile, a new position, and a new direction. Um, the previous data that the head had would then be moved or passed down to the uh, uh, to the segment directly behind it, which would then occupy the head's previous uh, position, tile, and direction. Uh, this segment's data would as well be passed to the segment behind it, and so it would continue all the way to the tail, um, at which point the tail would uh, signify that the tile it had just left would no longer um, <coughs> be containing a segment of the snake and would be free for uh, food to spawn or um, for the snake to move into. Um, Although, if this uh, tile would be directly occupied by the head after this movement of the tail, the tile would once again be occupied and flagged as a tile with a snake segment within. At this point, uh, the game was finished and I had essentially completed the challenge, even with the extra difficulties I wanted to add by making it a 3D game and uh, uh, by animating the movement and all the things I wanted to do. Although, I felt like this was a fine game and a decent game to play, I really wanted to take this a bit further and add some more charming uh, aspects and functionalities to the game. So I set out to add some textures, add some uh, a skybox, add some sound, and add some uh, different um, elements to the game. Here's a quick snapshot of the uh, resulting skybox. I had a few issues with this because at first I wanted to make a, an actual box with images inside it, but I eventually found it a lot easier and uh, more convenient to create a sphere with a picture that was um, fitted to a spherical form. And it will also make this a lot easier when I wanted to actually rotate the sphere and fit it to the changing size of the map. As of correctly adding the skybox, aka the sky sphere to the game, I wanted to pretty up the platform up. Um, I actually forgot to uh, record this sole step of printing up this platform, so this uh, snippet of video also includes the following step, which I'm going to explain right away. So I wanted to change the food, make it a bit more uh, dynamic and pretty. At first I wanted to make it an apple that was uh, bobbing up and down using a uh, sinus curve to update its uh, position in the uh, Z axis. Um, I told this to my dad because I was conversing sometimes with him about this fun little project I was doing. And he was like, what? Snakes don't eat apples, they eat like rats or rabbits. Um, and with this um, idea, he kind of planted um, this new functionality of the game in my mind, like this new um, idea of actually wanting the food to be a bit more dynamic than just sitting on the ground and you having to pick it up. So instead, I actually uh, implemented uh, some rabbits that were able to move um, and jump away from you. So you'd actually have to chase them and try to coordinate your next movement with the direction of the rabbit. Um, the rabbits like jump every second turn. And the turn which they don't jump uh, is a turn where they like determine the new direction. With this, you also have a chance of predicting the direction they're going to jump in, so you can coordinate your next move um, with this new position of the rabbit. With the game all pretty and charming, I wanted to add some extra gameplay elements to the game. I decided to create a scoreboard displaying the score, the amount of uh, the map the player was occupying, as well as the time spent on the current session. For each rabbit the player eats, 50 points will be added to the score, although for each step the player takes, one point will be subtracted. This incentivizes the player to take as few steps as possible while trying to stay safe and reach the rabbit to add even more points to their score. Whenever the player dies, a screenshot of the uh, game will be taken and saved in a folder, which will then uh, sort all these scores according to the highest score. Last but not least, I added audio to the game. This includes music, some birds chirping in the background, and in an audio snippet for whenever the player eats a rabbit. Uh, the game uh, is at this point complete, and the player can restart the session, uh, quit the game, uh, move up, down, all the sides. Everything works perfectly and works unintended, as intended. So at this point, I just want to show you some of the footage um, of the final game with audio working exactly as uh, planned.
So that was the third coding challenge, the uh, snake game. It was a pretty fun challenge, kind of difficult, um, but fitting for my level. It really helped me practicing, uh, you know, visualizing how I wanted to design a relatively large project for me. Um, so it was a great practice for, you know, thinking about a lot of these problems that I usually don't think about before I start designing the different aspects of the project. Um, originally, I wanted this uh, project to be displayed by by being played by one of my um, streamer friends. Um, but apparently, I can't make this game run on any other PC than my own, probably uh, because of some, some modules or, or things that other PCs need to have installed. I suspect they need to have installed um, Open, Open JDK 17, but I'm not sure. I ended up just showing me playing the game a bit, um, which I think is plenty fine. But yeah, um, it was great practice, great fun, and uh, I really enjoyed it. And I, I, you know, I look forward to the next challenge. But I think my next project will probably be a mod for Dota. I've been looking into it for a bit, and I have been working on it a tiny bit, uh, but kind of took a break because it turned out to be a lot more difficult than I initially uh, thought. Um, so I'm hoping to get back into that and uh, start, uh, you know, actually getting some proper gameplay elements and properly learning how the Dota 2 engine works and how to program in Lua. So yeah, that was it. Thank you for watching. I hope you enjoyed.